Today I've got a pretty cool problem I want to share with you. We have p of x, a polynomial with integer coefficients. We want to prove that there exists positive integer n such that 2025 divides p1 plus p2 all the way up to pn. So p can be any polynomial and from that we want to show that there is a positive integer n such that 2025 always divides this sorry, sorry not always divides the sum that there exists an n such that 2025 divides this sum okay cool let's dive right in do give this problem a go though i think it's an interesting one there's lots of ways to explore this um the crucial fact we're going to use, use here is that well because p of x has uh, is a polynomial with integer coefficients uh let me just write down a fact and that p of let's say t plus uh, 2025, that's going to be congruent to p of t mod 2025. So here t is just some integer. Um, let's make it a positive integer. So this is true, that p of t plus 2025 is congruent to p of t mod 2025. Um, why is this true? Well, let's just use an example and it will hopefully kind of make a bit of sense. So let's just say uh, p of x was x cubed plus 7x squared minus 3. The The idea here is if I now add 2025 to this, x plus 2025, this is x plus 2025 cubed plus 7 times, uh, sorry, 7 times x plus 2025 squared minus 3. But obviously, if I look at this mod 2025, I mean, if you've seen modular arithmetic before, this should be pretty clear. If not, imagine I expand all these terms. A bunch of them are going to have 2025 in, and thus be multiples of 2025. The only terms that, that won't will be x cubed, 7x squared, and the minus 3. And so this is all mod 2025. Cool. So we're going to use that fact to help. So in a way, this is, if we look mod 2025, this polynomial is periodic. And that's going to be the crucial fact we'll use to prove this, uh, this result here. Okay, so let me just scroll down, give myself some more space. So the idea here is we're going to create maybe a table. So I'm going to write the value of p of 1 there. I'm going to write p of 2 there, then p of 3 here. And I'm going to keep going until I get to p of 2025, like so. There's my first row. Then underneath that, I'm gonna just keep going. So p of 2026, p of 2027, p of 2028, and so on, up to p of two times 2025, should be 4050. The next row is gonna be p of, well, the next number, so two times 2020. Sorry, 2000. I always say 2000 and 2025. I mean 2025 uh, plus one. This will be p of two times 2025 plus two, and so on. You can kind of see where this is going. Uh, well, the table at least. This is three times 2025. And I'm going to keep drawing this table. Um, and I'm going to bring it down. And I'm going to keep going until I get to this bottom right element, which I want to be p of 2025 squared. So this one here will be p of 2024 times 2025 plus 1. This will be p of 2024 times 2025 plus 2. And so on all the way across like so. And I claim that this guy here will be my n and this will work. So I claim that if I add up all of these 2025 squared numbers, that will be a multiple of 2025 and therefore that will solve our problem. Uh, why is this true? Well, we could add these kind of horizontally, but the trick is to add them vertically. So these guys here, what do they add up to? Well, we're going to use this kind of lemma, if you like, the thing that we just proved up here, that P of T plus 2025 is the same as P of T, to notice that in this first column, all of these guys are the same thing, mod 2025. So I don't really know what this column equals, but I do know for a fact that this is congruent to 2025 times p of 1. But since everything here is all, all integers, this thing here is just going to be 0 mod 2025. So just to go over that, this first column here, there's 2025 numbers in that column. And I've started from 
one, then added 2025 to get 2026. I've added 2025 again to get this number and kind of kept going like that. So I've got a column here with 2025 numbers in and um, all of them are congruent to P of one mod 2025. Hence, I get this, but that of course is zero mod 2025. The same thing is true of this column. This is going to be 2025 times P of two, but again, that's zero mod 2025. Same with this column and same with all these columns. All of these columns here are going to add to zero mod 2025. So all 2025 squared of these terms are going to add to zero mod 2025. A pretty cool problem. I think modular arithmetic is super powerful and is really useful for these sorts of problems. So if you don't know modular arithmetic and you are looking to be able to tackle these more advanced problems. I think that's a really accessible tool. Even if you're in high school, that's when I learned modular arithmetic. Um, it's more normally more formally taught at university courses, but it's definitely something that's uh, very easy to pick up. So I'm sure there's loads of YouTube videos explaining modular arithmetic. Um, maybe I can make one if you want to see one. Um, but yeah, it's a really, really accessible tool for solving a lot of these math problems. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.